opportunity he's given for us to come together and to worship in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. We know that it is a privilege and it is an honor yes. to be able to come into the house of God. Yes. Yes. To give him thanks yes. for all the things that he has done. Yes. In spite of all the things that is happening in this world, yes. Uh, this COVID is ramping up again. We know that he has all things in his hand. Uh, so we just pray that, that we all stay safe, yes, yes. that we all stay smart, and we take this thing seriously. Yes. Uh, because it's taking people out faster than the first phase was. Yes. So uh, let's continue to be in prayer for all those who are in this nation, in this world, yes. uh, so they will be safe. Amen. September is sabbatical September. Uh, God says it's good to rest. <laughs> God says it's good to rest. I, 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 I take this privilege and this opportunity to rest a little bit in September, but um, God has blessed us with some angels uh, that will come and that will share with us every single Sunday in the month of September, and I'm just so glad that uh, we will have the opportunity to be blessed uh, by some new voices. Uh, God has gifted uh, these few young men to come and to share uh, with all of us during the month of September. Amen. So just because I will be here, everyone should still come. Uh, because you will truly be blessed on those Sundays. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Amen. On oh, last Sunday, I failed to make an important announcement, and that was uh, in honor of the late pastor uh, Isaac Flippin and Sister Eva Flippin, uh, we will be naming the parsonage back here in their name. Uh, pastor Isaac Flippin and even Eva Flippin Parsonage. Uh, because they have shown so much love uh, to those in the church. They've shown so much love in the community. And they, they have given all that they've had uh, to make sure that God's love was shown. And they used that parsonage for such, uh, such endeavors. So we want to name that parsonage after them. Amen. 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 God has blessed us tremendously above and beyond what we could ever hope for or think yeah, yeah. or even dream about. And because of that, we have the obligation, we have the opportunity to worship him through our giving. Yeah, yeah. God says, and the Holy Spirit says, that we ought to give according to the desires of our heart, to sacrifice in our giving, but do it cheerfully, give it honor to God, because we know that we would not have what we have if it wasn't for the goodness, the grace, and the mercy of God. Amen. So let us set our minds and our hearts right now so we can give unto him. Those of you who are in social media land, you can continue to give. Uh, by mailing in your offering at Emmanuel Pearl Gate Baptist Church, 19 Bayview Street, City of San Francisco, California, 94124. Or you can give through the cash app, dollar sign, Emmanuel Pearl Gate. Amen. Yeah. Let us all uh, be in tune to give. We're now in the hands of our officers.
hospital. Touch those that are in the streets of our city. Touch those that are in the prison yard. Touch those, oh God, that are in the convalescent home. Touch those, oh God, that are in broken relationships. Touch those, oh God, that are in the cloudness in their mind. Touch those, oh God, that need to hear a word from you. So, oh God, we just ask you right now to descend your spirit all throughout this land. For you said, oh God, if we just pray, if we just turn our lives around, that you will heal the land. And oh God, we are searching, we are seeking, we are crying, we are looking to you, oh God, to heal this land. Looking to you, oh God, to turn and take this COVID, oh God, and just use it, oh God, for whatever will that you have. Touch the sick bodies. Protect us, oh God. Let us turn our, our eyes to you so that we can proclaim that we know, that we love, and that we serve a mighty God. Oh God, let your glory be kindled within our lives so that we can be an example and a witness to those that need to see you in this dark world. Lord, we love you. Lord, we magnify you. And Lord, we praise your name for all the things that you've already done for us. For all the things that you're doing even right now. And for all the things you're going to be doing in the future. Lord, we pray all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Amen. And thank God.
us as the word. I just saw him just say one more chance, Father God, to just praise your mighty name. Thank you, Father God, for waking us up today. We thank you, Father God, for all the churches that are open in Jesus' name. I pray, Father, now as I bring the message, Father, that you use me as a vessel for the Holy Spirit to deliver your word to, to the saints as well as to myself, Lord. And I'll be careful to give you all the glory, all the honor and praise. And in the mighty and unmatched name of Jesus Christ, we pray. By show of hands, how many of you guys came looking for a blessing? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. How many came looking for fault? If you came, how many came looking for fault? If you came looking for a blessing, then it is a blessing you will find. Yeah. If you came looking for fault, it is fault that you will find. For there is no perfect church. And if you ever find a perfect church, don't you ever join it. Because you're not going to know you're going to mess it up. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Okay, repeat after me. I'm not where I should be. I'm not where I should be. Thank God I'm not where I used to be. And if I hold on, I'll get to where I need to be. If you believe that, say amen. 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 Well, good morning, Emmanuel Pearl Gate and the rest of the whole body of Christ. First, give an honor to God, Yahweh, our, to whom all glory belongs, and to our pastor, Dominic Hampton to Pastor Wade Hampton Sr., yeah. to Deacon Rattler and Evangelist Wade, uh, and Deacon uh, Rattler, excuse me, and the rest of our church body and friends, the Echoes Emmanuel and Sister Dorothy Cook. Amen. 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 Now, uh, I had a title for this message, and at the, at the end, the Lord said, no, change it. So the title of this, of this message is The Undisputed Heavyweight Champion of the Universe. Right. Amen. Amen. This morning, I would like to ask you a question, and that question is, what would you do with a promise? People throughout America go, go to work every day on a promise, a promise that if you go to work today and complete a day's work, you will be compensated Amen. or paid for your labor. Amen. 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 You have been promised that if you do the work today, you will be paid on payday, Amen. and most people today base their whole lives on this promise. Amen. 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 Well, in this morning's scripture, we will see that a promise was made and a promise was kept. Amen. 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 All right. A promise from the Messiah. Please open your Bibles to the 24th chapter of Luke, verse 29. And when you get there, give me an amen. And if you can, please stand for the reading of the word. Luke, chapter 24, verse 49. Disciples were given a promise. Now, remember, I asked you guys, what would you do? Oh, excuse me, you can be seated. Mm -hmm. read up. Sorry. Uh, as I told you guys earlier, and I asked, what would you do with a promise? Now, here in this scripture, in Luke 29, 24 49, God said, or Jesus told the disciples, He had just rose, uh, he had just rose from the dead. He walked with the disciples a little bit. He even ate a little bit to let them see that he was not some spirit, something like this. This was really the Messiah. 
And he told them before he left, he said, stay in the city until you have been endured or clothed with power from on high. Amen? Yeah. Right. Okay. And even though know, I asked you guys to have a seat, it's okay. I'm going to uh, go to the second chapter. The second scripture that I gave you guys was Joel, J-O-E-L, Joel uh, chapter 2, chapter 2, verse 28 and 29. Okay. And it reads as this. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Amen. Amen. And 29, excuse me. I'm using this phone. I should use my Bible. I was trying to make it back. Okay. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids, I will, oh, excuse me, in those days I will pour out my spirit. Now this is the message from the Father, as well as the promise that Jesus gave in Luke uh, 24, 49. He said he will pour out his spirit. Amen? Amen? Now, my brothers and sisters in Christ, I want you to pay attention to what God the Father says here in his most holy scriptures. He, uh, excuse me, the protected word of our God. He tells us here that God the Father will pour out his spirit, not the spirit, not a spirit, but his most holy, precious spirit. His beloved, most precious, divine spirit. The spirit of the almighty God will be poured out on all flesh, meaning all those who are born again, all who have been washed in the blood of the Messiah, all who claim Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. He will pour out his spirit on us and we will dream dreams and see visions. He, the Holy Spirit, not it, but he will be poured out upon all of us and he will give us dreams of things to come, dreams that will direct us. Dreams that will instruct us. He will teach us all things and he will lead us into all truths. Yeah. Truths about who Christ is and what he has done for us. Yeah. He will take the things of Christ and show them to us. Things that were promised before by the Father. Promise of things to come. Promise of power from on high. Yeah. Now we see here that Jesus said for the disciples to wait. Now in the Webster's Dictionary, it says that the word wait means to stay where one is or delay action until a particular time or until something else happens. The second meaning is to stay where one is or delay action until someone arrives or is ready. Mm -hmm. Remember the command of the, that the Lord said, well, just wait here, just wait, I got you. Don't trip, don't put the bounce, but I'll be back. Just hold on. <laughs> Amen? Amen. The, the Webster Dictionary also says that the, the phrase of wait or wait and see means to wait to find out what will happen before before or deciding to do something. Right. Amen. So you wait with expectation. The New International Version says that Jesus said for the disciples to stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Again, the dictionary defines the word or command to stay as such, to remain in the same place. Amen. Strong's Concordance has the word stay in Greek as meno, to stay, abide, or remain. All right. So they were given a command to stay or wait with expectation because something great was about to happen. Their lives were about to be turned upside down. They were about to be endued, or as the NIV, uh, New International Version puts it, they were about to be clothed. And the dictionary says to be clothed is to be endowed with a particular quality. So a blessing was coming. They were about to experience the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. And he was about to empower them with boldness. He was about to give them the reassurance that was much needed because they were shook up. Think about what had just happened. They had just witnessed, first of all, they had just walked with Jesus. And they witnessed him raise Lazarus from the dead. They witnessed him feed uh, 5,000 with the loaves of bread and the fish. They witnessed him walk on water. They witnessed him tell the olive tree to, to, to wither. They witnessed all these miracles. They seen that this was God Almighty walking with them. And then all of a sudden, they hear a mere man jumped on, beat him up, ripped his beard out of his face, just beat him to a pulp in front of him. And then killed him on the stake, and it was nothing that they could do. Just think about how weak they were and frail they was feeling. Like, wait a minute, this is God. This is Jesus. He commanded to see. He did all these things. And damn, they just beat him like that. So now it's like, because we also know in scripture that, that 
after they did that, they went to turn on the disciples. So they were shook up. So when the Lord came back, after he rose again, he wanted them to be, stay, stay here and be strong. Again, they were about to be powered. With the, with the blessed, they were about to be blessed with the power from on high because they was kind of nervous. They were shook up about what happened, right? Okay. They had just witnessed the Messiah tortured and killed, and fear was at their door. Oh, but God. We serve a mighty God. And he promised to send power from on high. He promised to send his power. He promised that they would be clothed with power from on high. Just think about it. To be clothed with power on high. Just think about when you first get out of the shower and that air hits you, that's, that's a different temperature than the air that was inside the shower, that nice warm air, okay? Then all of a sudden, once you get done and turn off the water, you step out of the shower and that change in temperature hits you and you feel bare and naked. Then you dry off and put on some clothes and you feel warm again. You put on some clothes and you feel whole again. You put on some clothes and you feel complete again. Because those clothes make you warm. Again, those clothes make you feel like you're in, your, you're in right standing again. Those clothes do something for you that your, best, your bare skin, skin just cannot do. And that feeling of completeness, that feeling of wholeness, that feeling of everything is going to be all right now because I have my clothes on now and I'm no longer naked, I'm no longer exposed to the world and I'm whole because I'm fully clothed, is the same feeling you get when you are clothed with power from on high. And you feel like you can take it on the world. There ain't nothing the devil can do to you when you are clothed with power from on high. When you are dwelled with the Holy Spirit of God. Amen? There ain't nothing to care in the world that is too big. There ain't a trouble that is too big. And there ain't nothing that can stop you. Amen? There ain't nothing that can hold you back or tie you down. Because the Holy Spirit of God is in you. And he will give you the power to overcome. And he will give you the strength. And he will give you the insight to keep looking forward. Yeah, okay. And he will give yeah. you the peace that passes all understanding. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Because he is the power of God and he is God. Yeah. He is the spirit that goes forth and moves mountains. Yeah. He is the spirit that goes forth when you pray and ask God for such and such. Yeah. Amen. When you ask God to do a miracle, yeah. he is the spirit that goes forth and opens yeah. the door yeah. for you that no man can close. Yeah. And he closes the doors that no man can open. Amen. When you pray to him and say, Father, please help me with this situation. Yeah, yeah. Father, it is, when you say that, excuse me, it is his Holy Spirit that comes to the rescue every time without fail. Yeah. And it is his spirit that shows up and shows out when you need it most. Yeah. Amen? It is his spirit that shows up when you, ask him in, when you ask him into your life and you want to tell the whole world about it. Yeah. It is his spirit that brings all things to your remembrance. It is this His Spirit, that same Spirit, God's Holy Spirit, that gives you the boldness to come out of the world yeah. and be deceptive. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. It is His Spirit, God's Holy Spirit, yeah. that gave little David, the, little David the boldness to face that giant Goliath, yeah. that yeah. uncircumcised yeah. Philistine. Yeah. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. It is this Spirit, this same Spirit, God's Holy Spirit, that shut the mouths of the lions. And then when David was doing the lion's game, uh -huh. it is this same spirit yeah. that was in the furnace with those three Hebrew yeah. boys, yeah. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yeah. Amen. It was this same yeah. spirit, yeah. God's Holy Spirit, that poured out, that was poured out on the day of Pentecost. Yeah. It is this same spirit, God's Holy Spirit, that touched the hearts of the board of prison here, and they found me suitable for release. Yeah. Yeah. It was this same spirit, God's Holy Spirit. Who led me to the Maryland Pearl Gate Baptist Church? Amen. It was the same spirit, God's Holy Spirit, that when I lost my job, He gave me another one, and He gave me another one, and He gave me another one. And I have not one time not been able to provide something for my family, put food on the table, or do something. My God has always been there for me, and it was this spirit, God's Holy Spirit, that provided this day. Amen. Amen. It was this spirit, God's Holy Spirit, that blessed the minds of the scientists that gave them the formula for the COVID-19 right. vaccine. Yeah. Amen. Amen. If you believe in prayer, then you know that it was the Holy Spirit that gave us. Yeah. Right. Amen. See, the problem with me today is that they don't know who the Holy Spirit is. Yeah. They pray for intervention, but never really understand who the Holy Spirit is. 
or even acknowledge who he is. Mm -hmm. They call the Holy Spirit a it. Wow. Like he's some ghost that shows up every time, every now and then. And they don't understand that the Holy Spirit is God. Yes. He's part of the Godhead. Yes. In 1 John 5, 7, it says there are three that agree in heaven. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. Yes. Amen? Amen? It was this Spirit, God's Holy Spirit, that parted the Red Sea. And the yes. children of Israel escaped through the parted sea. Oh. It was this Spirit, God's Holy Spirit, that put a pillar of fire at night. For the children of Israel to be able to see at night yeah, yeah, and to keep the predators away. Yeah, yeah. Amen. It was this spirit, God's Holy Spirit, that gave the children of Israel a cloud during the day to keep them shaded from the harsh sun as they walked in the desert. As they walked in the desert by day. It is his spirit, God's Holy Spirit, that will give you and us, me, the strength to do all things. Last week, Pastor Dunley preached a message that told us that it can be done. Yeah. Amen. You guys remember that? He said it can be done. Well, I'm here to tell you that it is His Spirit, God's Holy Spirit, that will make it happen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And it can be done. Yeah. But I'm here to tell you that just like any relationship you have, you have to spend time with the person that you're courting. Yeah. Amen. If you want to really get to know this person, you want to build a bond with somebody, you got to spend some time with them. I can't say I know you, I don't know nothing about you. I just spent no time with you. I haven't talked to you enough. Amen? Amen? When me and my wife was blessed with my release from prison, we had to really get to know each other. Because even though we spent time together in the visiting room, we really didn't know each other. Because we couldn't spend quality time together. Like all relationships, we both we both had on our best behavior because we liked each other and we really wanted to be with each other. Yes. So now that I'm at home, we were able to spend more personal time together. Right. Talking on the phone, going to the movies, going out to dinner, walking hand in hand on the beach, that personal quality time. Yes. Amen? Yeah. Well, it's the same concept with God. We have to spend time with him in order to really be able to say that we know the person. We have to really talk to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Amen? Yes, sir. Not just ask him for help and that's it. Yeah. How would you feel if you had a friend that only called on you when they needed something? Yeah. Then when they got what they wanted or what they asked of you, they go on about their lives as though you never even existed until they needed you again. So that you can know, have knowledge of what it is that he wants to teach you. Because trust me, as we know as Christians, the Lord is always constantly is constantly teaching us things, bringing us new things, building us up. Why? So we can be a blessing to somebody else. And sometimes it's not only what you say to do or do to somebody. It's somebody watching you at your job. It's somebody watching you in your neighborhood. You don't even know who's watching you. But one thing they do know, they know you're a Christian. Because somebody somebody even said it. And they're watching you. So you can either give God glory or you can put shame on the God. So you have to be careful about time. Amen? Uh, getting back to the message. <laughs> the spiritual eyes, and you can clearly see him constantly moving in your life. And also he will show you how he can use you in so many ways to help to further and build his kingdom, the kingdom of God. But first, you have to want him. You have to ask him to come in and dwell in your heart. As, as a, a friend of mine used to say, God ain't handcuffed and nobody in heaven. Come on, man, you want to heaven. That ain't how it works. If you want it, come get it, because he got it for you, but he's not going to handcuff you. Amen? Amen? If you want him to come in and dwell in your heart, you have to desire to give up your own will. This is tough, but this is where we struggle. When you want to know why I'm struggling with this, it's something that you hold on to. This I'm the main one. I know 
I struggle with certain things and I know I have to let these things go, it's struggling with that will. As the Apostle Paul said to put the Apostle Paul said, the, the soul, the spirit, and the flesh are constantly at war with each other. Amen. 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 Uh, Amen. Praise God. You have to give up your own will to do his will. You have to really make that decision to surrender all to him. You have to be willing to give it all up for his sake. You have to truly trust the Holy Spirit. You have to love the Holy Spirit. You have to want the Holy Spirit. And you have to learn how to really hear the Holy Spirit. First thing, it must line up with Scripture. Not every voice you hear is the Holy Spirit. Amen. It got to line up with Scripture. Then you must, uh, uh, excuse me, you, uh, listen to the Holy Spirit. He is God and God is love. Mm -hmm. So the things of the Holy Spirit, the teachings of the Holy Spirit will be done in love and about love. Mm -hmm. You know that little voice that tells you not to do or say something that you know you shouldn't have done or you should not have said. Right. That's the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit talking to you, trying to get you back on track doing the right thing. Yeah. It is well. Amen. The Holy Spirit knows what's best for us. That's why he closes the door to some things that we ask or some things that we want to do because he knows if it's going to go good for us or if it's going to go bad for us. Amen? So he will not even allow us to do such and such. We might hear about a party that we wanted to attend. We've been invited to it, but we can't find a babysitter. Or my car gets to messing up and I can't get there. So you miss out on the party. Only to find out that later that night, somebody got drunk, got into a fight, and shoot up the party. Amen. Just like Juneteenth at Lake Mary. I was on my way there. I was planning to go, me and my wife. But we never made it. And praise God, look what happened. Somebody shot up the thing, and I think it said six people got shot. But during that time and in that incident, you're like, Lord, why is it not working? Why am I trying to get it? The Lord is doing something. He's holding you back. We're here protected. We're covered in the blood. Amen. Amen. He, he's, in, he's in control. He's watching that. The Holy Spirit moves for us in ways that we do not know or completely understand. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit makes groans and utterances for us that we do not know when we do not know what we should pray for. The Holy Spirit is our big brother, and he is and he got our backs. Amen. That's why whenever I notice things just keep happening that are out of my control. I just give it to God. Yeah, yeah. I call on my big brother. Yeah. Amen. I say, big brother, I give it to you. I totally surrender. I, I have to surrender that whole situation over to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And now, at the age of 51, I don't do anything without first, and I mean first, giving it over to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I bow my head in total surrender, and I ask the Holy Spirit to take over. Yeah. I ask the Holy Spirit to take control. I ask the Holy Spirit to please fight this spiritual battle that I cannot win. Because scripture tells us in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Amen? For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual weaknesses, witness, excuse me, wickedness in high places. So according to the scripture, our fight is not with flesh and blood. Our fight is not against other human beings. Yeah. It's not with your co-worker. Yeah. It's not your co-worker that gets on your last nerve. Yeah. Our fight yeah. is not against that person who cut you off on the road. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> our fight is not against other, uh, 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 excuse me, against our children who fight against everything we try to tell them to do. Yeah. <laughs> our fight is not with our spouse. It's not with no human being. Because everyone, Everyone that I just named is made of flesh and blood. Yeah. Yeah. And remember the scripture said that, I, that we just read, it said that our fight is not against flesh and blood, but against the spirit world. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a friend, another brother in Christ, who always said, it ain't that dude, man. That's a demon wearing him like a jacket. Ain't gonna put him on any mess with him. Don't even get mad at him. Amen? Right. Amen. And the good news is, oh, excuse me, the fight is against the spirit world. So since that is the case, then you, then me, or we have to fight a spirit with a spirit. Amen? Yeah, yeah. And the good news is we have a big brother. Yeah. Amen? We have a protector. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. We have a friend on high. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. We have help 
from the spirit of all spirits and the Lord of lords. We have help from someone who will fight our battles, who is the undisputed heavyweight champion of the universe. Amen. Amen. And still the undisputed heavyweight champion of the universe, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God.
each and every one of us must hear, must understand, and must remember, especially during the times that we're living now. We must know, we must understand, and we must remember that we have the undisputed yes, we do. heavyweight champions All right. of the universe. Also, we want to say, you know, thank you for to the messenger's wife so, for supporting him. Amen. <laughs> From one strong woman to another. We thank 
thank you, O oh God, that you brought us to this very moment. We know that we could not have done it on our own. But it's because of the simple fact that you are the undisputed heavyweight champion of the universe. That we are able to cry out your name today and say thank you for all the things that you've done. But we're still in need of you right now. We ask you right now to continue to light our every footstep. Continue to light our lifestyles with your glory. So that men, women, boys, and girls will be able to see you in us. And they will come asking what must they do to be saved. Lord, we are a church that believes in the power of prayer. And we believe that you can do all things. So right now, we ask you to heal sick bodies. We ask you right now to mend broken hearts. We ask you right now to put back together broken relationships. We ask you right now, oh God, to mend confused minds. We ask you right now, oh God, to open up doors. And we ask you to close the doors in the face of the enemy. And for that, oh God, we give you the glory. We give you the praise. For what you have already done. For what you're doing even right now. And for what you're going to do in the future. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit. Rest rule and abide with us. Henceforth now and forevermore. Let all his saints say. Oh.